Mystery House, that same publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. So, we play the parts of husband and wife tonight, huh, Bob? Any objection? <laughs> of course not. I haven't complained about the role in real life, have I? Well, you better not. But if you ever try being the kind of husband in real life that you are in tonight's story... Watch out. Uh, you don't need to worry about Dan, Mrs. Glenn. He's one husband in a minute. Oh, uh, gee, thanks, Tom. Oh, that's all right, Dan. You know, you two know how to enjoy life. And here's a tip for others who want to get the most out of things. Okay, Tom, set the scene for the night story, hmm? A Short Life for Mary. The night story opens in the luxurious apartment of Alton Merriweather, an elderly man with young ideas. A flashily dressed young man who seems out of place in the apartment has just come in, and Merriweather seems anxious to talk to him. Well, Morgan? Ah, bad news again, Mr. Merriweather. What? You mean Miss Levon LaRue ain't really in love with me? Mm, she's in love with the idea of getting her mitts on your dough, Mr. Merriweather. Mm. Went for the proposition, <laughs> <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. A heart full of life to me, that babe. Mm, sure. She's mighty pretty, too. Real full of life, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, well, I got another. Listen, Mr. Mayweather, they're all alive. Ah, no, sir, Mr. Morgan. Somewhere there's a beautiful young woman who appreciates real character and brain. <laughs> and I think I found her, too. Here we go again. Her name is Mary. Real pretty name, hmm? Yeah. Pretty as a picture, too. Mary Delafield. <laughs> Out with her last night. And she said I could outdance any of the young spriggans that she'd run around with. Mm-hmm, I see. Yeah, you got along real good. She called me Alton, and I called her Mary. Ah, uh, they're a fast worker, all right, Mr. Merriweather. No, <clears throat> Mr. Morgan, if you're making fun of me... Oh, no, sir. And if you want to think I'm an old fool because I want a young, pretty wife, well, that's your privilege. But don't ever let on like you're thinking it. I pay you pretty good, don't I? Honest, Mr. Merriweather, it's a shame to take the money. Because I know always what the answer's going to be. I worked like a dog building up the Merriweather Steel Company. I never had any time for dancing or laughing or pretty girls. I always said they'd come later. Well, it's getting awful late. Yeah. <coughs> what are you talking about? Why, you couldn't stand the pace of one evening with me. Out till four o'clock with that Miss Delafield last night. Huh? Maybe you're right. Yeah. You give it a plan now and see what happens. <laughs> you know, I kind of think maybe she is going to be the one. <laughs> Why, sir. Yeah. Hello, Mary. I stopped by on my way to work. I haven't much time, but I had to see you. You were out with that old millionaire last night again, weren't you? Really, Frank, I'm too tired and sleepy to talk to you. No, I'm not going to take long. You've been running around with that old fool for nearly two weeks. Giving me the go-by for a dollar and a half, you ought to be in a wheelchair. I'll thank you to mind your own business. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm in love with you, Mary. How interesting. You'll be late for that job of yours if you don't hurry. We've run around together for nearly three years. Run around? Maybe that's what you call it. We've had some darn good time together. Going to the movies? Listen, Frank, I'm out of the movie class. I've graduated. Mr. Merriweather spent more money entertaining me last night than you make in a month. Is that all you're interested in, money? It's kind of nice to have it around. If I were to marry Alton Merriweather... Marry him? I was joking. Getting married to a million dollars is no joking matter. I thought you were a big kid. You have no right to talk to me this way. I can go with anybody I choose, and it's none of your business. If I want to marry Alton Merriweather, I guess that's up to me. Not altogether. Why I should be in love with you, I don't know. But that's how things are. And I'm not going to let you ruin your whole life. I'd like to try it for a million dollars. You're not yourself. You talk like a little... I'm a very practical person. Not a romantic fool like you. And I'll get a lot farther than you will. Why, for you... Of 
friend of yours, baby. Practically a genie with a magic lamp. I, I don't know. Uh, Just a minute, baby. It ain't polite to close the door on a guy's face. Not until you've heard the sales talk, anyway. So you're selling something. Well, I don't want any. I figure maybe you do, baby. That's why I waited for your old lady to leave for work and then for your boyfriend. I wanted to talk to you private. What about? About money, mainly. Lots of money. Look, I've never seen you before in my life. You've seen lots of me before we're through, baby. Good morning, your name, Mary. You, you know my name? Sure, sure. I know all about you. You and the kid down the street. And all about Mr. Alton Merriweather. Particularly all about him. What do you want? If you'd invite me in where we could talk nice and quiet, I could tell you. I... I ain't gonna bite. All right. Come in, but make it quick. I'm a private detective, Mary. I haven't done anything. I work for Alton Merriweather. I'm trying to find him a girl that really loves him. Oh, dear. The old boy trusts me. I've told him five or six times that some more after his money. So uh, now I'm all ready to take the easiest sucker in the world, and the juiciest. An old guy with dough and young ideas. I'll thank you to get out of here. A boy. Oh, come down off your high horse, baby. I'm giving you a real break. Without me, you can't land him. Not ever. With me, you might not even have to marry him to get real dough. What are you talking about? There's tricks, baby. Tricks you don't know. Alton wants a beautiful young bride. But if one will have him, he figures there must be a catch in it. And he's right. Mr. Merriweather's in love with me. Oh, sure. But he was in love with money a long time before he met you, sister. Don't forget that. You're the nerviest person I ever saw in my life. Now get out of here. You don't want his money, huh? You could get every dime of it. How? With me. Without me, you get nothing. But how do I get the money? That's the $50,000 secret, baby. All you gotta do is to leave it to me and follow instructions. You don't invest a thin dime. And once you get the money... They give me 50 grand. I, I... It's ridiculous. It's impossible. Sure it is. Things like this just don't happen. Or do they? You read in the papers every day about some young dame getting a heavy load of sugar from some old daddies. You don't have to tell me. But... I tell you nothing. I take all the risks. All you do is follow instructions. And collect. If you don't collect, I don't get a lead nickel. Is it a deal? I think they're talking to your hat, but... If it's... Could work out like you say. I, I guess I'd be willing to give you fifty thousand dollars. That's all I wanted to hear, baby. I'll start to work. Well, Morgan. Ah, you hit the jackpot this time, Mr. Merriweather. Uh, what's that? You mean she's really in love with me? She's nuts about it. <laughs> you, you made her the offer about getting my money without having to marry me, huh? I nearly got thrown out of her apartment. Say, she's so head over heels in love with you, it ain't even funny. Oh, my little Mary. I tell you, Morgan, I'm a smart man. It's work. It's really work. She thinks you're wonderful. Uh, yes, I'll marry you. I'll give her everything under the sun. Let you the cool she'll be. All the money she wants, everything anybody could ever need to be happy. <laughs> you, you think she'd like a big, long, 12-cylinder car with all the pennies, hmm? Mm, I'd still be kind of careful if I was you, Mr. Merriweather. What? How do you mean? See, she loves you, you said. Yeah, but I won't make out any insurance there, even so. Oh, why not? Well, maybe she's not the boss, but she's got a relative. And they might get ideas for getting a lift on your dough by, by you having an accident. Well, but she'd have a right to my money. Mm, if I was you, I'd give her a nice chunk of dough now. And say, maybe a quarter of a million. That way, she ain't marrying you for your money, and there's no temptation for her relative. Oh, you would, would you? Now, you can throw a quarter of a million dollars of mine around off a reckless, but I won't. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Morgan. I will marry her first. Ha-ha! <laughs> what? Mr. Morgan? Yeah. I've been waiting for you and Alton to get back from your honeymoon. I want to be the first to offer my congratulations. Is Alton here? No. He's down at the camp. Oh, well, then I can relax. Uh, you got the 50 grand for me, baby? You said you'd get the money without my marrying him. I said maybe I would. It didn't work. Then I don't see why I pay you anything. Mary, a copper well sent a bride split with me once, and they found him in the ditch the next morning. I don't owe you anything. Now listen here. 
You never in the world could have married him if I hadn't given it the okay. I could have stopped that wedding in a minute by telling him the truth. Well, you can't stop it now. It's too late. We made a deal, fair and square. A deal for 50 grand. It wasn't fair and it wasn't square. Besides, I had to marry him to get it. Now, look, baby, I ain't going to argue with you. You get me that 50,000 bucks or you're the deadest bride that ever got fitted for a coffin. Huh. That's very funny, that is. What's so funny about it? You're asking me for $50,000. I can't even get my hands on 50 cents. Do you know what I have to do to get any spending money? Take something out and sell it. What the old man said. I don't care what he said. Oh, he buys me all the presents in the world. Takes me places. Shows me off like a prize polo pony. I have an exhibition. But I haven't got a dime. A fine mess you got me into. Back in that dingy apartment of mine, I could at least go down to the corner and buy a paper with my own three cents. Are you leveling with me? You bet I am. And we gotta do something about all <laughs> Jimmy? He ain't got long to live anyway. But no, no, listen. I'm not getting mixed up in any murder. That's what I'm in now. It's, it's bad enough, but... Oh, oh you... You're frightened me. I, I thought you were down at the plant. Mr. Martin just came in to offer you congratulations. Yes, yes, I know. I've been listening to him. Just outside. Oh, you were... I never tested you anyway, Morgan. Too smart you were. Oh, you put down the revolver. Oh, no, don't worry, Mary. Get out of here, Morgan. And if I ever see you on the premises again, I'll have you thrown in jail. I... Yes, sir. Well? I didn't say anything. What are you going to do to me? I thought you was real sweet, Mary. I was crazy about you. Because I figured you really loved me. I should have known better. But I guess there's no fool like an old fool. What are you... Going to do? I guess maybe I'd better not tell you, Mary. It might upset my plans. You see, you ain't gonna like it. What kind of plan does Arthur Merriweather have for his bride? And will he be able to work it? Well, we'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's a brief message from our sponsor. Uh, let me talk to Skip Morgan, please. Yes. Uh, uh, Morgan? This is Alton Merriweather. Now, no, now, now, Morgan. Don't be apologizing. Mary and me got things all fixed up. <laughs> kind of reached an understanding. I just gave her $250,000. Want to start this time with a clean slate. So you can get your 50000 Morgan. Mm-hmm. Anytime you like. Goodbye. You mean you're really going to give me two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? I mean no such thing. But you said who are you calling now? Your old boyfriend, Frank. Uh, hello? A uh, Frank Grant? Uh, this is Alton Merriweather. Now, now now listen, now you've no cause to get nasty with me. No. Uh, Mary would like for you to come over. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe she kind of made a mistake marrying me, and she wants to see you. Yes, the sooner the better. Goodbye. What are you doing, anyway? If you think you're going to get evidence to get a divorce from me... No, no, I don't want any divorce. And let's see now. I've got one more number to call. 
What's her name, anyway? Uh, what was her name? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Susan. Susan Fair. <laughs> Stage name, I'll bet. <laughs> I've got a number here somewhere. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Who is she? What does she have to do with this, anyway? Ah, you see. Hello. Uh, Susan? <laughs> uh, Susan, uh, this is Alton. Yeah. Oh, no, brother. <laughs> I, I haven't seen you for quite a spell. <laughs> yes, I know I'm a bad boy. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I kind of called up to apologize for making such a fool of myself, Mary and Mary Delafield, when it was you that I was really crazy about all the time. Uh, oh, no, 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 I'm not. I mean that. That's right. Uh, it's the other one I should have married. Uh, divorce. Yeah, yeah that would be fine if Mary could be talked into it. But I can't do a thing here. Uh-huh. I, I was wondering if maybe if you were to talk to her and explain how things are with us, you, you, you will? Oh, I'm not standing. Uh, the sooner the better. Uh, goodbye, dear. What are you trying to do? If you want a divorce, I'll be glad to give it to you. I don't want one. You know what I was doing when I talked to Susan? <laughs> I was lying. Yes, ma'am. Just plain, downright lying. <laughs> yeah, they're getting here real fast. I wonder which one this is. Brent, how do you do, Mr. Brent? I, I never had the pleasure of meeting you before. How do you do? Mary, is it true? Did you really want me to come here? Uh, I... She made a mistake marrying me, Mr. Brent. We both admit it. Well, then you're going to give her a divorce? Well, that's up to her. If she wants it, then what goes with it? Oh, she won't need money. I can take care of her. If you've learned your lesson, Mary. I... Yes. Yes, I've learned my lesson. And then we'll start making arrangements for the divorce right away. Frank, please. Send her now. Don't start arguing about the settlement. We agreed on it, and it's fair. What are you trying to do to me? Well, yeah, looks like we've got more company. Hey, no, no, stay right where you are, Mr. Brent. Well, Susan Fair. Oh, you darling. <laughs> uh, come right in, Susan. Uh, this is, uh, this is Mary, my wife, and this is Frank Brent. Susan Fair, folks. How do you do? How do you do? Well, oh, I think, yeah, I thought you could. Oh, no, it's, it's all right, Susan. Mr. Brent here, he's Mary's old boyfriend. Oh, reinforcement for me. <laughs> oh, can you sure don't overlook any angles? Oh, you say the nicest thing. Thank you, dear. Are you in love with Mr. Brent, Mrs. Merriweather? I... Oh, listen, this is idiotic. And it does, Mary. Control yourself. After all, you have to make up your mind. <laughs> well, this is a party. Uh, excuse me, please. Ah, Skip Morgan, the great detective. And come right in, Morgan. This on the level, Mr. Merriweather? Oh, come in, come in, come in. Well, if it is on the level, that'd be something new and different, wouldn't it? If you're planning some kind of a trick with me as the goat, Mr. Merriweather, you can forget it. I know most of the angle. Yes, including ways to double-cross your employer. Oh, oh yeah. don't try to explain. Now that uh, we're all here, we can go down to business. Listen, all I want... I know, your $50,000. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. What? She has the money. All you have to do is get it from her. Hey, what's this all about, anyway? Your job shouldn't be too difficult either, Susan, because Mr. Brent here will help you. He wants Mary to get a divorce, too. Listen, Mr. Merriweather, you told me she was already getting a divorce, but you'd agree that there'd been a settlement. Now, just a minute, don't tell it. Just a moment. Don't be excited. Now, let's suppose that, uh, let's suppose that I had lied to all three of you. What? Yes. Susan, I told you that if you could persuade Mary to divorce me... I'd get married to you, didn't I? Oh, you sure did, darling. And what's more, I had my roommate listening in. <laughs> I rather imagine you would. Well, you go try to admire my affections, and you'll find that it's going to cost you a lot of money. Oh, well, that's quite, I have no doubt of that. The big idea is, you've got a motive for Mary's murder. What? Mm. <laughs> yes. Get Mary out of the way, and Susan, you could marry me. <laughs> you even have a witness. You're up to something, Mary Weller. You've got a pretty good motive yourself, Mr. Morgan. What? Huh? She owes you $50,000, and she hasn't paid it. People get angry about a lot less than that. Angry enough to commit murder. If you think you're going to frame me... I'm what? not framing anybody. And Mr. Brent, 
Your motive's the weakest of the lot. But it'll do. You think I'd have any reason to kill Mary? You're crazy. Well, when you find out the kind of trick she played on me, you may change your mind. She'd be crazy over because she loved me more than she did you. <laughs> it was a matter of cold text. Say, I don't like this. I'm getting out of here. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want any part of it. I'm not No, no, Susan, no, no. The only person who's going to leave here is me. I'm going out for a little walk. And this gun says that nobody's going to try to go with me. You're going to have a chance to talk things over. Give me that 50 grand, baby. I don't have it. I said he didn't give me any money. You're lying. I just want to know one thing, Mary. Are you leaving old Mary with her or aren't you? I don't know. I'd make up my mind if I was you, darling. Are you fool? Can't you see? He's kicked all of you. He's planning somewhere to kill me, and you're just his cause. He wants to suspect it. I kind of think I'd take old Mary with his word before I would yours, baby. Me too. You couldn't throw your card straight if you held four races. Hey. Did you know this? Tell him on somebody. Afraid, Mary? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I'm back, Mary. How does it feel to be in a dark room, locked in with four people who want to kill you? You stay away from me. Ah, but I'm not the only one to worry about, Mary. There are three others. Morgan and Miss Sayre after money. Frank Brent, whose life you've messed up. And me. Four people to worry about, Mary. It's not true. I never done anything to any of you. No? I... You don't even believe that yourself. Oh, you've got to help me. Get me out of here. I was already the one I came here. But you wouldn't even say you'd leave Mary with him, that you'd divorce him. No, Mary, I guess this is your problem. I'll do anything you say. I'll... I guess it's too late, Mary. I guess you don't want me. I guess that's about it. Get me that 50,000 bucks and I'll get you out of here alive, baby. I don't have it, I said. Oh, you said All you have to do is tell all me you can have a divorce. Do that and you don't have a thing to worry about. No, no. I'm afraid you're wrong, season two. That isn't all I want. I want satisfaction for the way I've been cheated and deceived. My friends, you're about to be in on a perfect crime. A perfect murder. Oh, you didn't do anything. You have too much to lose. One of the three people I invited here tonight is a confederate of mine, Mary. Only that person and I know which one it is. And that person is going to kill you. Oh, yes. I want to enjoy the rest of the performance, Mary. And the murderer has to see what he's doing. Hurry up and get the gun off the coffee table, Morgan. Why, you are... No! No! I never get to it. Got a money in for $50,000 for you, Morgan. I'll show you how much... No, look, Eddie, the guy's playing with me. I wasn't... You're not going to kill me or anybody else. Quit pointing that rod at me. No, I please. You're going to kill me, will you? No. I'll show you. And nobody can do anything to me. It's self-defense. Self-defense! No! No! You... No, I... I did... Honest. I... No. (laughs) <laughs> Pretty nice job, Mary. Well, I guess that takes care of everything. What? Yes. I hadn't hired him to kill you, Mary. I hadn't hired anybody. Morgan and you were the two I wanted to suffer. I put that gun closer to you than to him, so you'd be sure to get it. And you killed him without any reason, Mary. You killed him, and the state will kill you. You'll be convicted of murder. And I'm all taken care of. <laughs> Pretty slick all around, ain't it? Yes, it's slick all right. Just overlooked one thing, Alton. When you're equipped anyway, you don't have to worry about losing. <laughs> yes. Yes, I should have known. You can't even lose for <laughs> You killed him. How do you get the tail for this? I might have been able to help you on Morgan. But not this one, Mary. Nobody could help you now. I know. Go ahead. Call the police.
Thank <laughs> you. 